All right, so now we want to talk a little bit about some of the different methods that you might go about using to actually sow seed. Um, first of all, the lowest, lowest tech, least expensive method is simply to have a bucket, have your seeds, and literally be broadcasting them by hand. If you do that, there's no cost other than, you know, your time, but um, it's a little bit more of an imprecise method in terms of distribution rate, um, plus all your seed is going to be up on the surface, and when it's on the surface, then you're going to need to come back and at some point um, cultivate it in. In a garden scale, you would probably rake it in. On a field scale, you know, but one way or another, you would need to cover your seed. Um, the least expensive, slightly mechanized method is to use something like this, um, which some people call a cyclone seeder. Um, Kelly, what? What's? Oh yeah, cyclone seeder or a belly grinder. Belly because it hangs around, hangs over your shoulder at about the height of your belly. Um, so basically there's a large seed hopper and, um, and then in the seed hopper at the bottom of the chamber, there's a place, there's a kind of a little window at the bottom that we have closed at the moment but through this mechanism, this lever right here, you can open it to the desired width. And I don't know if you'll be able to see the light coming through there, but um, down in the bottom, um, I could open it for a really large seed and high, um, high rate of dispersal, I'd open it all the way. For a much smaller seed, I might have it just barely cracked open. Um, in this case, for our mixed cover crop seed, I would have it about halfway open. So I'm gonna fill my seed, and then once I'm ready to go, and we're just gonna do a little bit of this right here for the sake of, the, um, for the sake of demonstration. But once I'm ready to go here, I'd have my seeder on, I, would open the shoe, oops, open the shoe. Seed's gonna start falling out, and then I'm gonna crank this lever, and this disc here with these little um, fingers on it is gonna be spitting the seeds out. Um, whatever the rate of di drop that I set is gonna be one factor with this. The next factor in terms of distribution rate is the harder that I crank this, the further the seeds fly. Um, and if I crank it slowly, the seeds will, uh, the same amount of seed is gonna fall in a much narrower diameter circle. And then similarly, if I'm walking really slowly, I'm putting out more seed. If I'm walking really fast while cranking, um, I'm putting out much, much less seed. So this is a $40 or so tool that for many years here at this farm, we actually um, seeded several acres, five to seven acres of, of tractor cultivated fields by hand with this and then came back and mechanically incorporated the seed um, before we had sort of the next level of um, seed distribution tool, which is essentially a three-point hitch mounted version of this same type of seeder. Um, on a garden scale, we look at thinking about um, distributing our cover crop seed, usually using either a seeder like this, the Earthway seeder, which is a lightweight, fairly inexpensive, under $200 for the seeder, and um, all of the seed plates that both would allow you to cover crop, sow your cover crop seed, but then sow many, many other types of food crops that you would direct sow. So there's a radish plate, a lettuce plate, cucumber plate here, corn, lima beans, kind of standard bush beans, all sorts of different plates. Um, in this case, we, for cover crop, if we wanted to sow that same mix, we would use the pea plate because the pea plate um, has a big enough hole to pick up all of the different seed sizes. Um, and as how this seeder works, um, nice thing that it's aluminum and plastic, it's highly maneuverable. There's a smaller hopper or reservoir here. And then the seed plate that is attached here um, 
is activated. It kind of works a little, sort of along the water wheel type concept. The front wheel as it, you put your kickstand up and the front wheel as it's turning is articulating the seed plate through that, um, through that reservoir of seed. And then each of these little um, scoops essentially pick up seed. And then when it gets to the top, it drops through this chute here. And then as you are moving along the ground, this shoe, which is adjustable for depth, depending on the crop that you're trying to sow, um, is cutting a furrow. Seed is dropping immediately behind right there. And then right after that, the chain comes over and sweeps soil back over the seed. And then finally, this rear wheel is the pack wheel. So all in one motion, you have seed you have a furrow cut seed dropping seed being covered and then the pack wheel giving you seed to soil contact um really nice flexible relatively inexpensive um and your sowing density is partly based on your your seed plate that you choose and then also based on how closely you're going to drive your rows next to one another and for cover cropping we pretty much are going to run our rows just a couple inches apart so we would be going up and down our beds side by side rows as parallel as possible as you're operating by hand um, and then finally the last tool that is very similar to the earthway but has slightly different mechanics is this this is a planet junior cedar these have been around for a really long time it's steel and wood so it's a little bit heavier duty making making it last longer but also making it a little bit less uh, maneuverable um, but it kind of works on the same basic principles um, you have a seed hopper here we have a seed plate and these outer holes um, are all on on a single plate you have different seed holes, different, excuse me, different size seed holes that um, you would select the right size for the crop that you're, um, or crop in this case, crop mix that you're trying to drop. Um, in the, here we're set for size number, or hole size number 36. So we're gonna fill our seed hopper. Um, and if we look down in the hopper here, um, you'll see, it's gonna be a little bit hard to see, but right in the very bottom, is the hole where the seeds are gonna drop. We do have a lever on the other side that allows you to close the drop so that I can maneuver from one place in the garden to another. And then when I'm actually ready to sow, I push it into the open position, seeds immediately gonna start falling. And then like the sort of water wheel effect of the earthway, this one is activated, there's a gear connected to this uh, front wheel that is dropping, um, allowing the seed to drop by taking um, a, a set of brushes that are inside the bottom of the hopper and brushing and sweeping seed across that hole so that you have continuous drop. Same basic thing is happening with the Earthway and the Planet Junior. We have a shoe that cuts a furrow and it's out of adjustable depth. Right now I've got it set to almost the deepest depth for the bell beans. Um, this will cut about a one inch deep furrow. Um, seed falls through this slot, falls behind the, the shoe that's cutting the furrow. And then these steel sweeps here sweep behind and cover back, um, bring soil back up and over the um, seed that's just been placed in the soil. And then finally, you have the pack wheels, which as I roll forward, the, uh, I've, the shoe's so deep, but pack wheels are giving me seed to soil contact. The front wheel is operating the brushes. Right now on hard ground, um, I can't actually do them both at once, but um, one of your goals when you're operating this in your field or garden is you're actually needing to maintain contact with both wheels simultaneously because we need to be operating the brushes and we need to um, be creating that uh, seed to soil contact, both with the sweeps and then with the, with the pack wheel. Um, and in hard or really bumpy ground, sometimes that's problematic, but if you have raked off the soil surface, um, that should, um, it should operate just fine. In worst case scenario, you might back the depth of the shoe up a little bit because right now that's sort of the pivot point between the front and the back wheel. But if the shoe isn't cutting quite as deep, then um, you shouldn't have a problem with seed to soil contact. 
Got extra seed plates with different hole sizes, you know, all the way down to like carrots and clover up to much, much larger seeds, as big as lima beans and the, and the edible fava beans could be um, sown with this, assuming you pick the right seed plate. Um, so let's start with, um, maybe we'll just stay here. So, so here we've got kind of gear drive from this front wheel. One thing to note if you're thinking about seeding rate, one full revolution of this wheel is three feet. So one of the ways you can dis discern how many seeds are dropping is if I put a mark on the wheel um, and then open up the seed plate and then rotate it th a full revolution three feet. Or if I want to get a little you know, larger sample size, maybe rotate it twice around, um, get six feet or even nine feet, and then all of the seed that falls, I capture that like in a cup or a bucket or something like that, and then I can do a quick count on how many seeds actually dropped. And was is that the distribution rate that I want? It, you know, was I shooting for 12, 12 seeds per foot? Was I shooting for 20 seeds per foot? Did I want only three seeds per foot? Um, I can regulate that by then adjusting which um, seed hole I'm actually using um, by going to a slightly larger or to increase the drop rate or slightly smaller hole size to decrease the drop rate. So yeah, this front wheel controls the brushes that are inside here. And if we take a close look, you'll see this one has uh, brushes. Sometimes it's a little bit more of a, a fin or ridge type model. And as the wheel spins, those brushes spin and push the seed out and over the seed hole right there, which I can also close off with, the, um, with this mechanism. And then finally, to show you over here, so I, right now for this, the seed we're about to sow, I have it on um, seed hole number 36, but um, seed's gonna go through those brushes, get pushed through the hole, it's gonna drop down this channel and this shoe right here is going to be um, cutting my furrow. Seed falls directly behind that. These metal sweeps here um, bring soil back up and over the seed. And then finally, the pack wheel, as it's rotating, really affirms that seed to soil contact. All right, so we're ready to go. We've got our hopper full. We had preset our seed uh, plate and seed hole size. Um, the depth of the shoe should be just about right. I just actually adjusted it to make for a little more shallow of a drop. And I've clicked the lever and the hopper's open and we should be good to go. And so I'm trying to maintain reasonably parallel rows and trying to make sure the front and the back wheel are both turning and doing their job. Um, making sure no debris is catching and getting in the way. Um, and then secondarily, I'm also watching the hopper itself and hopefully noticing that the amount of seed in the hopper is diminishing because seed is dropping, doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Oh yeah. So I also, when I get to the end of the row, um, this actually, <laughs> there's supposed to be a little lever so I don't have to bend down to do it, but our, our plant junior is missing this. But so I'm leaning forward, I close the chute um, when I get to the, or close the bottom of the hopper when I get to the end of the row so I'm not dropping seeds as I'm turning around. And then I have to remember every time, open it back up before I start going again so that once I want seeds to be dropping, that they actually are dropping. If you pan up and down the row, you're like, oh wow, my rows are pretty much right on top of one another. But the reality of it is that my seed drop is happening in this little teeny ridge right here. Um, and so what that means, at least in my first few rows here, 
is when these seeds germinate, they're gonna be about three, four inches apart. I can try to pack them in a little closer and then I'll have a higher density stand, but I don't want it to be too, too dense either um, because then the, the plants will be really competing with each other, not just necessarily competing with the weeds as one of their, one of your sort of goals that you're trying to accomplish. Um, so this particular block here, this is about a 40 foot wide by 100 foot long block. Um, we will go back and forth um, until we have all of the rows in, and then we're gonna set up irrigation because unfortunately our fall winter rains still seem to be quite a ways off. So we'll set up irrigation and trigger through that, trigger the germination process and get, um, get our cover crop uh, started and established to really build and protect the soil. It's a bit of extra work to actually irrigate things up to start them, but it does give us the advantage of then already having good vegetative cover before the rains come. And if the first rains come and they're big and heavy, even with your cover crop seed in the ground, that could mean some soil damage, soil destruction happening. But if we already have even just a small short canopy, it's right away from the first rains is gonna be protecting the soil from the impacts of those rains, both of capturing the impact of the rain, as well as the roots allowing the water to better move through the soil and um, the roots holding the soil in place against any potential erosion.